gradually as we get closer to the weekend, it should be getting a little warmer, a little more seasonable for fall. So who knows, maybe housing will be just right. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Um, I have nothing to return to you today because I didn't collect anything last time we met. And according to my notes, uh, everything that you had for homework today, there were four melodic dictations. I believe you had the answers available to that as well. So I don't feel the need to pick up anything for a grade just yet. However, I will be uh, collecting some stuff, uh, especially especially starting next week in, in November. Okay, so just be aware of that. Anytime you have an assignment that says quiz, there's a good chance, doesn't mean I always will, but there's a good chance that I'm likely to collect one of those quiz pages for home or for a grade, so. All right, so um, what I'd like to do today is, oh, by the way, I was going to remind you all, um, maybe some of your other professors have reminded you, but you know, this week is the start of what's called advising week. So all of you have an advisor, or should be assigned an advisor, and I believe most all of the uh, music faculty here have, or if they haven't, they should. They should post um, some signs on the uh, office doors so that you can sign up for maybe a half hour slot of time or something to go visit with your advisor. And I mean, it's it, it's just a little out of the ordinary, um, but it, it, it makes it a little bit exciting, I think, in that sense, because you get to think about what you're going to be taking next semester and how you're going to be going getting just a little bit closer to, uh, you know, your goal, to your degree, to the courses that you need to get out of the way, that you need to get taken, and so, so on and so forth. So if you haven't done that already, uh, maybe please uh, walk by or stop by your advisor's uh, office door and see if there's a sign that you can sign up for a time. It's this week and also next week for our uh, advising. And then your advisor, what they can do is they can take off of your account something called an advising flag or an advising hold. And that will allow you to register for spring classes. Um, and that will start actually the week of November 9th. The week of November 9th. So it gives you some time to think about it, uh, decide what you want, you know, discuss it over with your advisor, and then uh, certainly sign up for spring classes before we leave here for the semester. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, with that said, let's just uh, move right along then. Oh, by the way, do you all know who your advisor is? I think the only advice, the only one in here who's my advice is Tyler. I think everyone else you must have another advice. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, let's uh, open up our sightseeing books, please, to page 30, and we'll get going. What other what other major, what other field besides music do you get to come to class and do you get to sing together? I can't think of a single one. <laughs> um, on page 30, I would like us to look at one of the melodies I assigned for today, that is melody 3.8. And because this melody is just a little bit lengthier, it is three lines, I prefer, if, if you don't mind, I prefer that we just ignore or skip the repeats. And we'll sing this melody to warm up our voices. We'll just sing it straight through, no repeats. And what this melody is in what key? Who can tell me? Yeah. F major. Yeah, I always want you guys to tell me the key because I know the key. And I know you guys know the key too, but I just want you to tell me. So I know the key. We start on me, as you can 
C, the third scale degree. And it looks like we're in a triple meter and we start on beat three. So lots of threes going on here. Triple meter, start on beat three, start on the third scale degree. Okay, think of your first pitch. Let me give you a moment to do that. And you, by the way, feel free to hum it out loud if you want to. This is hand signs. Okay, remember, no repeats. Here we go, I'll give us two beats. One, two. Of course. 
<laughs> and then the second name I have today is Caitlin. So Caitlin will be seeing 3.9 when we get to that. How about that? Both people are here. So let's start with 3.7 on the top of page 30. Uh, Glenn, I'm sure you know, but tell me anyways, what key are you in? Oh, G. G major, that's right. And for a scale, I'm going to, are you a baritone, is that correct? Yes. Okay, then I'm going to give you a low G to start your scale. Okay, so. here, I believe. You can either sing uh, the low, start on the low soul, like soul, or you can start on the high one, Because I don't, I mean, the lowest note that I'm looking at, it gets just a, it goes down to T, just a, a half step below do, which I believe you could reach if you want to sing it low. Otherwise, if you want to sing it up higher, stronger, that kind of thing, you're welcome to. So again, here's the do. Wonderful. 
beautiful. Sounds great. Now, do you know what syllable you start? Yeah. Uh-huh. And yours is, I, I almost gave you the hand sign, but yours is conducting. Do you know where that pitch is? Mm. Wonderful. Yeah, just make sure you start on beat four in your conducting and give it your best shot. Okay, let's just check the pitch on that measure. I got a little off. No, that's fine. Can you start right in the second to last measure on this? Thank you. 
to give a shout out for a little heads up on that 313 because it starts on red. The only other one I'm going to mention, and yeah, I don't know that we need to sing it necessarily, is 314. This one's assigned for uh, next class as well. Um, and the only reason I'm going to mention 314 is because I believe it has kind of a wide range. It has a range of wider than an octave. Now, I know most of us, the majority of us, I would think, has a singing range larger or wider than an octave. But, excuse me, if you can't sing it in the key that it's written, please be sure that you choose a key, and it can be any major key, I don't mind, but choose a key that will work with your vocal range. You see how it starts on a sol, do, and then it goes down to mi in the first full measure. But then as you get to the very end of the melody, we have um, yeah, I just, just want to bring that to your attention, okay? I don't think a lot of you will have trouble with that, but um, just so you know. <laughs> I think that's got a little bit wider range than a lot of the melodies that we sing here, so. Um, by the way, that's, some. Um, you can see that that melody is by, huh, that melody is by Brahms, which makes me think of something a little uh, off kilter, but I think we might have time to do it, if you don't mind. Um, I'm going to find something that you can find on YouTube to show you because I was going to well, show my, show my, I showed my, um, or talked about this with my uh, theory three student yesterday. Did this come on? Or did it go off? Oh, it's on. It is good. Um, because we're going to eventually get to that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I like to. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me. I said I was going to find YouTube, so I do have it up here, and I got to connect so you can see on the TV what I'm doing. This was originally not in the plans for today, but I figured we got time, so I'm going to give it a shot. In case you don't know, Brahms, he was a 19th century composer. Uh, I would say he was born around 1833-ish, I think, if I remember right. He lived to about 1897, okay? And he's known, he's a romantic composer, and he's known for having this really long, when he got older, bushy white beard, which you can see. <laughs> and this video I'm gonna play, which is only 30 seconds long, I don't know why somebody came up with this, but they decided to make a little movie about a serial called Raisin Brahms. I've seen this. Have you seen this? Before? I have seen this. Oh, great. Okay. This is what they want to do. So, I, and I just thought of that when I saw that Brahms composed of the tune for Melody 314. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, listen to this or watch this and see if it comes through.
Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the arts! <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Okay, that man, was that entertaining? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so when it works right, I mean, he comes in and he says, Guten Tag, you know, what does that mean in German? It means like, good day or good morning, oh, right? Guten Tag means good day. Yeah, and um, so they're eating their raisin broth, and first the one kid says, oh, that's really good. And second of all, I mean, it's not only good for them, but it helps them have good problem-solving skills, too. Did you hear that? That was good. All right, okay, so that's, <laughs> that's a little uh, aside for today. Um, <laughs> All right, let's get back to what we were doing. Uh, I'd like to go through one one rhythm, please, out of your sightseeing book, and then we'll shift gears. Could you go back to page eight, just so that I don't leave uh, rhythms in the dust? I don't want you to forget about these. Remember, you do have one rhythm assigned that you need to video record yourself performing before, what am I seeing, November 12th? Yeah, by November 12th. Okay, on page eight, I just want to read through Rhythm 136. Let's see, that was a sign for, yes, that was a sign for today. <coughs> Just make sure we're not getting uh, sloppy in our rhythm performance. So 136, you see the meter, we're in triple meter. And what beat do we start on? Three. Three, that's right. Okay. Notice the half note is the beat in this meter, so that means we're tap, we're conducting the half but we're tapping the chord. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Starting on beat three. One, two, three, one, and three, one, and two, three, one, and three, and one, and two, three, one, and that's it. We just have two beats in the final measure. I think we've talked about that. Why are there only two beats in the final measure? Yeah, because there's a pickup beat. That's right. Okay. Thank you for indulging me on that. Let's go to the ear training text, if you would. Open up to page 60. That's going to 
and you could think of it as one and two rather than just one note per beat. If you hear two notes per beat, you've got you've got the division. You've got eight notes. Okay, so um, as a suggestion, and only a suggestion, I'm going to uh, use a, a shorthand system of notation that you may find helpful. If you do not find it helpful, then that's okay. You do not need to use it. Well, that's probably not many families for the demonstration. And in common time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down lines for each beat in the measure. One, two, three, four. And there's a bar line. It's one, two, three, four. And there's a bar line. One, two, three, four, etc., etc. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do an entire rhythm this way, but I'll illustrate hopefully a few measures. Um, making multiple strokes for each beat in your shorthand system is one, I can think of one good way to mark the notes at the division of the beat level. Right? I don't need to tell you again that our goal is not to get the note heads into the staff and perfect them right away after the first listen. Right? We don't need to do that. We want to capture the information now, first and foremost. So if my rhythm is something like... Okay, that's two measures worth. If I have that much, what's one way I could capture that information? Again, just a suggestion. If you've got a system that works better, please use that. You could do something like... Ba, 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 ba. Just a suggestion. If you have a better system that works, please feel free to use it. Whatever works with your way of thinking and listening. Um, I can think maybe another way to do that. If you've got these lines that mark the beats, you could maybe do something like, um, uh, maybe up here you could do ba, uh, let's see, ba, 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 ba. And if you guys are sitting there thinking, ah, that's 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 for sissies, I got a better system. That's fine. <laughs> Does anyone want to come up and show me your system? No. Okay. Well, I may ask you that if we have extra time, some class. Me? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyone? You know, to, to come up and share their system so that we can all benefit and learn from the way you handle it, the way you think about it. Okay, so this looks like gobbledygook, right? It doesn't make any sense. But if you know what you're talking about and you're counting along and making marks to capture the information, you will be able to understand your system. It will make sense. And then you can actually turn it into legible rhythmic notation, which is what we want. At the end, you know, like after the third or the fourth or the final hearing, whatever you have. All right, so with that said, I'm going to uh, go to the piano and I'm going to play the rhythm of number one at the top of page 60. And as you know, I play a rhythm. Uh, I play a melody along with the rhythm. You do not have to notate any of the syllables for the melody. Although, if this rhythm is so easy that you want a challenge, then please go ahead and try that. But really, I just want you to focus on make sure you get the rhythm as accurate as possible. And now I can use the staff over here for the common time. What uh, you tell me, since I don't have your book. Does the author give you the first beat, the first two beats, or what? The first beat. The first what? Which one are we on? Uh, number one. Just on page uh, 60. First beat. What's the first beat? Okay. One quarter. I bet it's going to be followed by two beat minutes. <laughs> Does the author use an up stem or a down stem? Up stem. Okay. Because the author only has, you only have one line. I have to use the full five lines.
question? Yes. Um, if eight nodes are in the same beat, do you want us to borrow them or not? Yes, if they are on the same beat, please borrow them. I think that's, yeah, this is when we get into other more complicated rhythms. It's sometimes hard to remember how to do that. I think borrowing eighth notes, especially ones that belong to the same beat, promotes organized thinking. So I'm all for it. Yeah, that's right. Besides, by the way, if you haven't had any breakfast yet after this class, go get some raisin bran. <laughs> raisin bran is currently underrated. Do they? Do they? They don't serve raisin bran in the cafeteria. Do they? Unfortunately, no. no. Problem-solving skills are off the charts this morning. Good. I never thought <laughs> Let's um. Let me. I, I just would like to check uh, your memory. How well you're internalizing this rhythm. Um, if you haven't already done, that's great. Please not try not to look at your paper. What I want to do is I want to have us all conduct in four, and I want to have us vocalize the rhythm just on the neutral syllable ta. Okay. From as, as much from memory as possible. Okay, so let's give it a try. One, two, three, and go. Ta ta ta. This time the beat numbers instead of using ta, I'm sure you could do that. I'm sure you could do that. Right? And that's really all it takes, right? That's if you've got that internalized up here, 
then you can write down that information here because you're smart. <coughs> you know how rhythm works, and you know how to count, and you know enough about music that you can just make it all happen. Um, yeah, I guess technically I said I played it one time, so let me just play it once more. For those of you that are done, you can check your work. And for those of you that are actually going for syllables, for pitches, this might be an opportune time to get those too. Just like what we vocalized. Yes. Can you put the melodic notation on the Absolutely, yes. You're you're reading my mind. We're on the same page here. Okay, so. First measure, door and E. Next measure, Fa, Mi, Re, Mi. Next measure, Do, Ti, La, Ti, Do, Re, Mi, Re, Do. Oops. Re, Ti, Do. I was just telling my um, RL Skills 3 class yesterday, I was just telling them how, I don't know about you, but for me, I can remember rhythms a lot better when they're attached to a tube. <laughs> when I've got some pitches to also grasp onto and hold onto, I think the rhythm just comes right along for the ride. Um, again, I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm, I'm kind of a firm believer in that. So. Um, so, I don't know if anyone went for the pitches, again, you didn't have to. But these are those, so you can check those, hopefully to uh, make sure you're right, that sort of thing. All right. Um, <coughs> well, this, this class went so well and so efficiently that we're going to end five minutes early. So I'm okay with um, breaking for the day. Okay. Have a good rest of your day. And then we'll see you, most of you, probably tomorrow at some point for theory and other things. <laughs>